Right now, midday in Moscow on this Monday. Thanks for joining us on RT International. 92 people are dead after a Russian military plane crashed into the Black Sea just minutes after taking off from Sochi airport. Today is a national day of mourning here in Russia, and relatives and friends of those who died are remembering their departed loved ones. Он и сам, Женька, то он с виду такой колючий, как ежик, внутри топлый. В результате артобстрела пострадали члены нашей семьи. Один ребенок погиб, два человека выжили. Это жена и ребенок, остались инвалидами. Миши сделали операцию, мне сделали, меня обследовали полностью. Очень большой след он оставил в нашей жизни. Мы это никогда не забудем. Жалко, конечно, жалко. С детства уже дружили, приехали вместе с Воронежа. Работали вместе в Воронеже, потом решили в Москву приехать. Приехали в ансамбль, Александра работали. Все как-то вместе двигались. Он все время стремился солистом стать. Стал солистом, достиг. Как бы, как бы не верится ничего вообще. Такая жизнь. Я умоляла, я просила, не летай, пожалуйста, не летай. У 30-летнего парня, естественно, много чего впереди еще должно было состояться. Не состоялось. Это, конечно, невосполнимо, но жизнь продолжается. Надо как-то с этим смириться. Artis Murad Gazdiev knew some of the people on board that flight, including sound engineer Alexander Soydov. He shared his memories with us. We all knew him as Sanya. He was the sort of person who no one could ever say a bad thing about. Never got into arguments, never said no, would always go out of his way to help people. He was always cheerful. We spent a month working together in Syria, and Sanya had a passion. I remember he loved his guitar, always took it with him. And almost every evening, after a hard day's work, we'd go back to the hotel and he'd play for us, the journalists, locals. One of his favorite songs was this one, a Cossack singing about how he wouldn't live to see spring. Ironic, isn't it? Sanya, eight more journalists and 83 others didn't live to see spring. Ужасная трагедия, которая сегодня я пришел на работу, узнал, что наш коллега Олег Тестов, замечательный человек. Очень больно. Хороший он парень, светлый. Собраться невозможно. You know, it might seem obvious, but I've never lost anyone in this way. It is so much harder when you know well the people who perish in such tragedies. The most basic right is the right to life. During these difficult times, it's been vilely violated. We, the human rights activists, don't take part in politics, nor do those we protect. We can never be sure that we'll come back alive, because war is a living hell. That was Russia's own Mother Teresa, Dr. Lisa, as she's known. She was the country's most revered humanitarian activist. She was on that plane. Dr. Lisa would go to war zones to personally find people 
children who needed urgent help and who couldn't get it. And she'd save them. I met her for the first time in Donetsk. We filmed her work there. What really struck me about this tiny woman was how gentle and caring she seemed. And over tea, I remember, curious, where did she get her energy from? I asked her, why do you do it? And you know what she told me? She said, why don't you? Though my colleague Roman Kosarev knew her even better. It's uh, really surprising uh, to me how this uh, tiny woman, she was uh, able to uh, to put so much burden on her own shoulders and uh, she would travel all the time, she would be uh, in the helping mode. The journalists, Dr. Lisa's death, that was gut-wrenching, but it was worse than that. The world-famous Alexandrov Ensemble, or the Red Army Choir, also perished in that crash. To lose the entire orchestra in this way is an indescribable ordeal. What it must be like for their loved ones parents, wives, children. One man sent these messages, urging his family to stop worrying and go to bed, telling them, for one last time, that he loved them. Another sent this picture with the thumbs up to soothe his sweetheart. As fate would have it, a lead singer missed out on the fateful flight, but even to still be alive now is a terrible burden. Everyone's calling me saying, thank God you're alive. I was woken up by a phone call and was told what had happened. I just can't believe what's happened. We need time to comprehend it. My wife is crying, my kids don't understand. Now I just want to go to church and pray for my friends. Russia is in shock. It is still coming to terms with what has happened. A tragedy of such proportions will leave scars that will persist for decades. But the memories of those lost, so painful now, will in time help us heal. Among those who lost their lives in the crash was Valery Khalilov, the head of the choir and Russia's top military orchestra conductor. He only took up the position in April of this year, adding to an already impressive career. Among his achievements was conducting orchestras at Victory Day parades for over a decade. He also oversaw the Spaskaya Tower Festival, the world-famous event for marching bands held annually on Moscow's Red Square. We spoke with David Johnson from the Celtic Mast Pipes and Drums Band. He knew Khalilov personally and took part in the Spaskaya Tower Festival with him. We worked very, very closely with General Khalilov and he, I remember my first meeting with General Khalilov where he said, he asked me to do something with the bagpipe music. It wasn't, it wasn't possible and uh, we were both standing in the Red Square and he was telling me, you will make it possible. And I was saying, but I can't and I won't make, can, cannot make it possible. And we had this bit of a standoff and that was where he then shook hands with me. And ever since then, we were the best of friends. When he stood up in the, uh, on, on, in front of all the mass bands for the finale each evening on, on the Moscow Tattoo in Red Square. Um, he was a, a fantastic, powerful figure. His legacy comes into every part of music, no matter what type of music you're thinking about. It's, it's just a, a terrible loss. There were also a number of young female dancers on board flying to Syria to take part in the New Year's festivities. And the ballerinas also belong to the Alexandrov Ensemble. None of them 
older than 23. As we show you some of their photographs here on RT International, uh, we understand that the upcoming photograph of this lady here, Ralina, was actually engaged to a young musician also on board the craft at the time. Meanwhile, Russia's transport minister says it's too early to speculate on the possible causes of the crash, with the search and recovery operations still underway. Let's take a look and see exactly what happened before the flight crashed. And the plane took off from a military airport in the Moscow region. It was heading to the Russian Khamim Amir base in Latakia, Syria. The army's official choir was traveling there to celebrate the new year with a Russian pilot stationed there. A number of journalists were also on board. So the plane stopped there to refuel in Sochi before continuing its journey. However, just two minutes after takeoff, it disappeared from radar and the first oil slick was discovered only one and a half kilometers off the Sochi coast. Artis Ilya Petrenka is in Sochi for us. Overwhelming grief, a feeling of devastation. That's what Russia is going through exactly a day after the country found out about uh, those deaths in that TU-154 plane over the Black Sea shortly after takeoff from the Sochi International Airport. Here in the city of Sochi, people have been coming to the airport and also to the Black Sea coast with flowers and candles. They were throwing flowers into the water, so tears and sobs as those spontaneous memorials are growing. During the first day of the search, a total of 11 bodies have been recovered from the water, and they've already been flown to the Russian capital, where they will be identified. Of course, uh, the Alexandrov's choir united the brightest talents from all over Russia, and the relatives have been asked to come to the Russian capital to help the identification process. Now, here in Sochi, the non-stop, round-the-clock search operation continues, involving more than 3,000 people, more than 100 divers, dozens of vessels, of course, renewed efforts as uh, daylight come. Now, speaking of the investigation, authorities are still looking into all the possible theories of what happened, and a source and the security service has told the journalists that terrorism is the least likely option because it was a military airplane and any security breaches or intrusions can almost be completely ruled out. Let's I show you some images from the Russian city of Sevastopol where people were gathering on the Black Sea coast in the hours last night and the early hours this morning as well, throwing flowers into the water and lighting candles in honor of those who lost their lives in the tragedy.